to today's Tech Talk. Uh, we're super excited to be here to talk with you all today about radio. Mm-hmm. I'm Anjal Morvat. I'm a principal product manager on the Alexa audio team, and I work specifically on our Alexa radio product. Hi, uh, I'm Julian. I'm a senior product manager on the Alexa audio team. Uh, I also work on the radio product, although I'm a bit newer to the radio space. Uh, I've been at Alexa audio for a couple of years, but only started working on radio uh, in uh, December 2022. So I guess with that in mind, we're, we're super excited to talk to you guys uh, today uh, about our product. Um, but let's maybe just start with the background. So uh, Anjal, can you tell me about the radio experience on Alexa? Sure. Um, so radio is available today on Alexa uh, worldwide in most countries that Alexa is available. I think um, we're in uh, 40 plus countries. Uh, you can play radio on any Alexa device that has a screen or doesn't have a screen. You can play it um, through the Alexa app on your mobile device. Um, and a customer can ask for a radio station in a few, few different ways. Uh, you can ask for a station by the name of the station. You can ask for a call sign like KQEZ, um, or you can ask by frequency, so 101.2 or 99.5. And any of those, you can just say, Alexa, play uh, 101.2, and Alexa will get you a station. I imagine there are a lot of 101.2s. How does Alexa know which is the right one? So that's one of the things that we built as part of our radio skills kit. Um, So it's a a good segue into talking about that a little bit. Uh, We built the skills kit in 2019, and it really came out of that exact question. How do we get uh, the right station to the right customer? Because Station names uh, tend to repeat. Uh, There's also different frequencies depending on where you're located. 101.2 in one area of the world might be a different station than 101.2 in a different area of the world. Um, So we saw a a real need to figure out how to get the right station to the right customer at the right time. So we built our skills kit and part of that is happening on the back end is that whenever a customer asks for a station, Alexa is figuring out, okay, based on uh, what stations are available to the customer in that area, which one best meets what they're asking for. So all of that is kind of happening behind the scenes in those few milliseconds between when a customer asks for a radio station and when Alexa plays one back. That's awesome. So it sounds like you guys have a, you, there's a lot figured out already uh, in terms of a, a kind of a rich feature set. What has it taken to actually get radio stations available on this RSK um, up until now? Yeah, so uh, as I mentioned, we built the radio skills kit in 2019. And what that did, in in addition to sort of the the back end work that's happening behind the scenes between when a customer asks for a station and when they get the one that they asked for, um, there's also the piece that how do we get radio providers um, and radio station owners to get their stations onto Alexa so that there's tons of selection for customers around the world. Um, So one of the ways we did that, uh, in the past, a radio station owner could build their own skill using our core skills kit technology. Um, And we found that for some of our biggest providers, um, it required a lot of resources. It took six plus months of effort uh, for the radio provider and for our teams at Alexa to be able to support them in building that. So it was really a pretty time intensive uh, process, both for radio owners and for teams at Alexa. Uh, So one of the things that we wanted to do was just figure out how do we make that easier for people? How do we make it really easy for our radio partners and radio station owners to get their stations onto Alexa? How do we eliminate the need for all of those resources on both sides so that we could get stations onto Alexa faster so that no matter where you are as a customer, you have a really great selection, really great options to choose from. Um, So what we did was built essentially a no code onboarding solution. So that means that our radio providers didn't have to spend that six plus months of effort building their own skill on Alexa, which is um, uh, kind of like an an app (laughs) in the Alexa world. They didn't have to go through the process of building all of that. We basically uh, created a way for them to provide us all the information that we needed to know about their station. And then we did all the background work uh, and, and eliminated that huge process that was necessary for them to onboard. So that's allowed us to move a lot faster and made it a lot easier for our radio partners to get their stations uh, onto Alexa. 
That's great. So, I mean, so why are we here today? How are we, how are we changing that experience now? Yeah, um, so we did greatly reduce the time frame that was required and we reduced all of the code work and resources that was necessary to get those provider stations onto Alexa. But we've been doing that through a really manual process. So our teams actually have um, a, a template in Excel that we share with partners and they uh, fill that in and send it back to us. And then we have someone who for the past year or so has been actually manually kind of looking at all of the information that's provided about stations, validating that data, um, ingesting it into our catalog in the back end. So it's been a very manual process for the past year or so. Um, and we wanted to simplify that as well. Amazon, we're all, we're all about um, invent and simplify, <laughs> making things easier for our partners and for our customers. Uh, so we built uh, a console, basically, that allows these radio station owners um, and radio providers and um, marketing and uh, any number of job families that might be working on a, a radio station to be able to use a, a web app, a console that they can go in and sort of step by step um, be able to add and change their station data on Alexa. So we launched a, a limited release of that uh, a few months ago. <laughs> And that kind of gets us up to where we are today um, with the larger console release coming up. I think maybe this is actually a good time for us to switch roles a bit, if you don't mind. And I can kind of um, ask you some questions about the console since I know you've been putting a lot of work into that as well. Sure. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, happy to kind of flip the script and, and take some questions myself. Absolutely. Cool. Um, okay, so if I'm putting myself kind of into the role of the radio station owner, um, Tell me about this new console. What can uh, providers use it for? How, do, how does it work? The console that we built really is for radio station owners. Um, it's not for you know a, a tech savvy audience. You don't have to actually be a, a developer to use this console. We really wanted to make it um, pretty easy. Um, so the first thing you do you need, and I say you don't have to be a developer, but you do actually need an Alexa developer account, um, which is how you're going to log into the the console. Um, so really easy to create one of those. You just go to developer.amazon.com. Um, you can walk through uh, some of the steps there to 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 create your account, um, and that's uh, the account that you're going to use to log into our, our new um, Radio Skills Kit console. Um, <clears throat> so once you're in the console, uh, you're going to be able to um, add your radio stations. Um, there are actually a couple different ways that you can do that. Um, you can go one by one. So if you have a single radio station or you just want to test it out, um, there's a, a really easy uh, form in the portal that walks you through step by step what you need to add. Um, there are kind of tool tips throughout that tell you what each of the metadata fields are. But we're really looking for things that you probably already know. Um, obviously, your station name, there's some guides there that, that tell you, you know, how Alexa might pronounce that. Um, you're going to want to put in you know, your slogan, the genre, uh, the frequency, uh, all those sort of things. Uh, of course, we'll need a streaming URL because uh, that is how we, we play back the stations. We're not actually uh, doing terrestrial radio. Um, and then there's also a bulk process. So if you have a bunch of radio stations, you want to add them all at once. Um, you can download an Excel template. Again, there's going to be some, some tips there uh, on how to fill out each of the fields. Um, you input that there and uh, then can can upload your, um, <clears throat> your stations. Um, you know, we know that uh, we actually, as as you mentioned, we have some existing um, station owners who've already onboarded with us. Um, and once you do go through the process, you'll you'll find as well that you you may often want to make changes um, to your station. So that that was actually an interesting learning for us. We didn't realize we sort of thought you know once a station owner submits a station to us, um, that's kind of the end of the story. It'll go live on Alexa. Great. Um, but we actually found that a lot of station owners, um, one of their big pain points was this manual process that we have um, that they would also have to use to update their metadata. So one of the common things that we hear is, you know, format flips. Um, so for example, um, around the holiday period, a lot of station owners want to flip to a, a Christmas theme or a holiday theme uh, for their stations. Uh, and so now through the self-service portal, um, you can log in there and uh, make those changes, you know, update the, the graphic uh, that will display on our screen devices, update the station name, update the genre, uh, et cetera. And uh, yeah, the, we, we wanted to make it easy and, and really empower uh, radio station owners to, to, to self-service um, all of those aspects of, of, uh, of station addition, station maintenance, et cetera, and, and make it easy for radio to be on Alexa. Awesome. Would it be possible to actually show us the console and maybe kind of walk through a few of the um, different things that you could use it for? 
Absolutely. So definitely happy to show you with the, the caveat that uh, I'm showing you basically test data. This is a development stage of, of the site. It's going to look and, and feel exactly the same, but uh, the, the station names here don't make a lot of sense because this was just me sort of playing around and testing. This is our, um, this is our uh, radio skills kit console. Um, and so here what I've done is I've, I've, you know, as I said, tested and added a bunch of different stations. Um, but uh, yeah, so you can see my, you can see my current stations in the list here. Um, I've, testing a lot so I have about 40 of them um, and you can sort of you can make edits in bulk so let's say I you know have the same edit that I want to make to a bunch of stations um, and these are my existing stations I can I can select a bunch of those and then I get some options down here um, these actually have been um, uh, stations that I have made some changes to but have not yet submitted uh, or published. Um, so I have the option to submit here or I can go in and I can edit fields, but I can also go, go ahead and uh, add new stations. So I have a couple different ways that I can do that. Um, I can import uh, a bunch of stations in bulk using an Excel file. And so if I go do that, uh, I can basically just upload my file here um, and uh, we'll ingest it and do some backend validations. Um, but if I'm not sure, um, you know, I, I need a little bit more help um, kind of going station by station and I want to add something new, um, I can go one by one. And so you'll see here, you have the option to put in your station name. Uh, we're marking that as a required field. Um, and uh, you can add uh, alternate names here. There are tool tips here uh, that will give you some tips. Um, a lot of them are more descriptive than this as you go through, um, but you can uh, see what you need to do to fill out your, to, to add your station. Um, so I'll make up a name here, Hot Hits Seattle, um, and then uh, I can go next. Um, and so I've, I've filled in the station ID and the names. I've skipped some of the alternate names just for, for time. Um, but then you can go through, you can add, you know, your, your call sign, your frequency, your location. This is the kind of information that we're asking for. Um, and uh, see, I think, it, yeah. Uh, and then on the, the final screen, you can see I didn't actually fill that out. So we can, we can see that this is not, not done and I, I can't actually submit my station yet. But, you know, I'll add things like your station art, your slogan, um, the stream domain, that's that's your streaming URL. That's really important. That's how we actually uh, play your stations. Um, so since I'm not ready to, to actually do that, I'll, I'll cancel out uh, and I'll come back um, to, to this screen here. Uh, and I can once again um, view some of my existing stations, you know, filter on a bunch of attributes. I can see um, which ones, you know, need review, um, which ones have already been uh, published, um, which ones are in progress, um, you know, filter by, you know, when I've added things. Um, uh, based on date uh, and all that, all that good stuff. Plus, lots of uh, information here uh, in terms of our documentation that'll help you get started, um, understand uh, basically, you know, how to add your stations, what's expected, what the statuses mean, um, the timelines. Uh, of course, answer some frequently asked questions, um, and then give you an easy way to uh, contact us and actually ask for some uh, assistance. So, yeah, in a nutshell, that's our uh, Radio Skills Kit console. Amazing. Um, I think you had mentioned that there might be a way to check how your station is performing. Is that something that you can get to from this console as well? Yeah, absolutely. So that would be our analytics dashboard. Uh, there's a link down here at the bottom. Um, so if I click on this, uh, since this isn't real data, I'm actually not sure what's going to happen. Uh, yeah, it'll take me to a, a blank, <laughs> a blank <laughs> dashboard, essentially. Um, but uh, you can see, you know, things like you can, you know, set the time interval that you're interested in. Um, and then you can see, you know, number of customers, like the, the duration of listening, um, the average listening hours per customer, actual number of play queues, um, et cetera. So uh, lots of good ways to um, understand the performance of your stations and um, see how they're doing on Alexa once they've published. That's amazing. Can you tell me a little bit about what's happening behind the scenes with this new portal? How, how long does it take if I added my stations? Um, kind of then what? What's the next step? Yeah, definitely. So um, like you said, there was this manual process of validating some of the data, making sure that the formatting is all correct. So uh, we wanted to remove that manual part of the touch point. Um, and so for each of the processes that I outlined, um, either you know, adding stations one by one or in bulk or, or updating stations, um, there are some validation checks um, both within um, the UI itself. So if you're making edits one by one, um, we'll actually flag in real time if, uh, for example, you've made a mistake and your um, frequency, you actually put in letters. 
um, or you know your call sign is a bunch of numbers and you know something that something that just doesn't make sense and we know doesn't match what what the data should be. Um, we'll flag that to you in real time, um, and then for the bulk process, we'll also you know do some some processing uh, as we ingest your your files. Uh, it's just an Excel file um, to flag you know what's gone wrong and, and let you know how to fix it. Um, so so that portion happens uh, kind of instantaneously. Um, and then there's some stuff that, that goes on in the back end um, once we've actually ingested that data. So we do have actually some content moderation checks. Uh, so we've integrated with some other really cool tech that Alexa teams have built um, to essentially check for profanities, um, you know, profane images. Um, so you will not be able to, to upload um, stations that you know, have something that you really wouldn't want to expose um, all the all the types of people who have access to Alexa too, which includes families. So that'll happen on the back end, um, and you know that that does take a little bit of time. Um, but um, the other aspect uh, that that you know is really important is obviously uh, you know we're a voice first experience, and so we have to make sure that we recognize you know your station name, for example, um, and that Alexa can sort of understand and hear you and know that that's a radio station when your customers ask for the station. So um, there's some back end modeling work that happens automatically as well, um, and basically all of that uh, takes place over around 72 hours. So that's the the SLA or the or the the service level that that we're quoting um, is that from you know station ingestion, uh, there's about 72 hours before the station should go live. Can happen faster as well. Um, I should note, um, there's one exception to this. Uh, we're, we're working to remove this exception as fast as we can, but unfortunately right now, due to some differences in the way our um, radio is implemented in the UK, uh, we do have a longer SLA there. And so that's actually about three weeks. Um, but in, in our other locales, um, and, and you can see more uh, in our documentation, uh, which um, which countries were supported in, uh, we do uh, we do expect that to take no longer than 72 hours. That's amazing. So even at the long end, um, those radio providers and station owners um, in the UK can use the tool, but it may take a little bit longer for everything to be live. Is that right? Yeah, exactly. That's right. So don't want to deter any of our friends in the UK from using the tool. It will just take a little bit longer to go live. Um, I should also note, by the way, um, that, you know, for transparency on where your stations are in terms of in, in processing, um, once we ingest them in the portal, you'll actually see statuses there. So you can see that, you know, something's um, either has some errors or it's in progress or it's been published. Um, so it's really easy to, to check where you are and, and know whether your stations have gone live uh, using the tool as well. That's great. Um, so once you get through that process, after you, you add your stations and the content moderation and modeling and all that great stuff is happening in the background, once your stations are live, I guess, live on Alexa, <laughs> um, mm -hmm. what, what can you do as a provider at that point? Like, what's the next step for them then? Well, I think the first thing you want to do is just test to make sure it works. Um, we're proud of what we built, but, you know, we know that, you know, things don't always go quite right. Um, and of course you wanna put yourself in the, the shoes of your customers and, and know what's working or know what needs improvement. So we always recommend that providers really test out um, trying to ask for their stations. Um, so one of the great benefits actually of uh, RSK versus building um, a custom skill that's not an RSK skill for Alexa is that out of the box, um, you get really natural utterances to work. Um, like you can just say, play play my station. If, if your station is, um, let's say, uh, pop hits, you know, uh, play pop hits Seattle. If that's my station name, um, that should work. Um, as you mentioned, um, you can also use frequency. So if I'm, I, I'm based in Seattle. Um, and so if my station is in Seattle and it's, let's say it's a 98.1, um, I have no idea if that's a real station, but if I, if I upload it and I say play 98.1, um, because I'm based in Seattle, um, that should work as well. Um, we do actually recommend, you know, just think about how, you know, you, you speak uh, on a day to day basis um, and how your customers might speak. And, and also keep in mind that, you know, your station probably has a call sign, frequency, um, a brand name. You may promote it in different ways on air. So so bear in mind that your customers actually may ask for your station in different ways. Um, we, we do actually have a field that we call alternate names that we really encourage um, station owners to take advantage of to add some of those variations and how customers might act for their, ask for their stations just to make sure it's as flexible as possible um, and that, you know, customers maybe saying not quite the right thing uh, still can get to your station. So, so testing it out first um, is going to be um, 
the, the, the first thing that I would recommend station owners to do. You can then also, of course, begin promoting uh, listening on Alexa on air. We, we love that. <laughs> um, we, we hope you will as well. Um, but, but we have found um, that can be a, a really cool uh, way for station owners to actually really increase engagement um, on smart speakers, uh, encourage listening, you know, in the home and, and not just out on the go in the car. And if you want to, you know, then check how that's going. Um, we actually have an analytics. We have a link from within our um, Radio Skills Kit console, we have a link to uh, an analytics page. Um, and so you can actually check your analytics. You can see things like how many customers are playing your station, um, how many times they're playing it. We call those play cues. Um, so th there's a little bit of a lag there. Once your station go goes live, it takes about 48 hours for those analytics to start publishing. Um, but that's a great thing uh, to, to be able to look at as well, just have really easy access to that. Um, and if something is going wrong, um, you know, there is a contact us form within our RSK console as well. So you can um, you can submit a case there, uh, and we have a group of developer advocates um, who are fielding those those intakes. And you know, we find that a lot of the time, the questions that we get from station owners, or at least the ones that we've gotten so far through the existing kind of manual process that we've had, are things that you know we actually have documented answers somewhere, but we know that you know people don't always read everything. So a lot of those are kind of easy questions to answer, and, and we hope that you know you'll get a, a quick response back, or they may even just be able to point you to some existing documentation. But yeah, those are some of the things that you can do once your stations are live on Alexa. Gotcha. Um, and if uh, if a radio station owner sort of, I think you mentioned earlier about um, they do sometimes seasonal flips um, mm. or sometimes they might find that, oh, actually customers are asking for my stations in different ways than I expected. Can they also use the, um, the console to go in and, and make changes after the fact? Yeah, absolutely. Um, and, and that's why we wanted to make it as easy as possible and self-service for, for folks to go in uh, and make those changes. So basically, once you submit a, you go in and you add a new station, um, like I said, it can take about 72 hours for that station to get published. During that time, you'll see it, the status is in progress. Um, can't make changes during that in progress status, but as soon as the station's published, uh, you can go back in there. Um, you can make any changes that you need to, whether it's a, you know, a station flip or you find that, hey, actually, you know, I... Uh, a lot of my customers are telling me that they've asked to play my station using, you know, a certain phrase or utterance and it's not working and you realize, hey, I didn't actually add that in my alternate names or that's not quite my station name. I want to add that just to increase my coverage uh, on Alexa. Um, you can go in there, you can make those changes um, and submit them and, and that kicks off another sort of 72 hour uh, SLA before those before those publish. That's amazing. Sounds very uh, adaptable. Um, so once my stations are working exactly as I expect them to, um, what else can I do? What else can I try or uh, promote to my listeners over the airwaves? Um, are there any other interesting radio features that I should know about? Yeah, definitely. So this is actually one of the really cool things about the radio skills kit um, versus trying to build your own kind of custom skill that's that's not um, designed for radio. Um, there are a bunch of really cool features that work out right out of the box without you having to do anything. So one of those is alarms. Um, a lot of people, you know, in the morning, they <clears throat> have, you know, they have a habit of listening to the radio. So they may want to wake up to your station. Um, so you can just, you can try saying, you know, Alexa, wake me up to station XYZ. Um, and uh, Alexa will ask, okay, great, what time? Um, so you can set that, you know, as a one-off, you can set that every day. Um, we, we know that some customers, you know, love to, to wake up to a, a station in the morning. They have a beloved, you know, radio morning show host uh, that they listen to. And, and that's just a, a great way to get out of bed. Um, speaking of the morning, I mean, routines uh, is another one that we actually find is um, a, a really great way of um, kind of creating sticky engagement on Alexa, because a routine is something that um, basically, um, it you can either schedule it or you can invoke it with um, a, a, a set phrase, um, and Alexa will do a bunch of actions that you've set. Um, so you can build your own routine, um, but there are a lot of pre-built routines actually that you can um, you can view. Um, this is all uh, most easily accessed by the way the routines are um, in the Alexa mobile app um, that you can download on your phone. But uh, there's actually a cool one that I just came across today called Morning Shower um, that I didn't know about, but uh, apparently um, you can enable Alexa to recognize certain sounds um, 
that's, you know, it's disabled by default, but you can enable it. And one of those is running water. And so you can set up this morning shower routine. And uh, if Alexa detects running water for more than two minutes, um, she tells you the weather and then she starts playing your favorite radio station. So you can put whatever station you want there. You can play around with your station um, and, and see how that works for you. But um that's something that's really cool. So, so there are a lot of those um, that, that you can set up. You know, you could have, um, you could say to Alexa, you know, good morning and set it so that, you know, the bedroom light comes on, Alexa tells you the weather and, and your favorite station starts playing. Um, not just mornings, of course, you know, those are throughout the day. Um, but, but that's a really cool feature. And um, we found really good engagement over time from customers with those. Um, another feature that, you know, works right out of the box with Radio Skills Kit that doesn't with um, a custom skill um, is whole home audio. So if I have, let's say, you know, three echoes and I want to play my radio station everywhere, um, I can say, you know, LA, Alexa, you know, play 98.1 everywhere. Um, or maybe if I've, you know, created a group in the kitchen um, I, and I have a couple different speakers, I can say, Alexa, you know, play XYZ in the kitchen. Um, and that just works. So there's there's nothing for you to do, no development costs, no extra investment. Um, these are all kind of just some of the built-in features with Radio Skills Kit. And um, yeah, they're, they're um, great things to, to, to use yourself and, and to think about promoting on your air as well. I'm actually going to try the morning, the morning shower one. That sounds really cool. I didn't know about that routine either. Um, I frequently use uh, a radio listening routine in the evenings when I'm making dinner. There's a, um, a talk program that I like to listen to around six every day in Seattle. So, um, yeah, those are very cool features and i um, excited to try them out. Yeah, absolutely. Well, we're, we're excited for you all to get to try them out, too, and, and hopefully um, more local radio station uh, to, to be available on Alexa. Um, so so can't wait to, to share this all with you. Um, if you do want to learn more, uh, we, and we hope we certainly hope that you do, um, you can go to uh, Alexa.design slash RSK, uh, where we have a, a whole page built out um, to tell you all about the experience, the features. Um, and of course, as I mentioned, you can go to developer.amazon.com uh, to get a developer account and and, and begin developing with us. Um, and by the way, that Alexa.design slash RSK uh, link will have a link to um, the uh, Radio Skills Kit portal uh, as well. So you can, once you do have your developer account, you can get right into um, developing uh, and, and adding your station. So we, we hope you do. Awesome. Thank you so much to everybody for joining us today. Um, and we'll see you soon. Thank you. Bye. Yeah. Thanks, everyone. Bye.